Hello, you are welcome once again to this video learning session produced by Rwanda Polytechnic. And you are still learning about surveying instruments module for masonry trade. Remember, in the previous session, we performed one surveying task on how to measure the horizontal distance using this kind of level which is an automatic level. Then, now, we are going to perform another surveying task, which is the leveling operation. So, we are going to perform the leveling work. But so far, let me first give you a clear definition of leveling. So, what is leveling in surveying? Simply, the leveling, it is a process of determining the relative heights or elevations of different points on the surface of the earth. It means that in leveling, we measure the vertical distances. So, leveling deals with the measurements in the vertical plane. That is leveling. So, what is the purpose of leveling? The purpose of leveling is just to find the elevations of points with respect to a datum. And also another purpose of surveying is to establish the points at given elevations with respect to the datum. So the datum may be an assumed datum or a given datum. That is all about the purpose of elevation, simply to find the elevations of given points with respect to the datum. In the leveling, you need to be familiar with some terms, with some technical terms as they are, they are used in leveling. So those terms, we are going to be using them during our leveling practice of today. Those technical terms, they include like, for example, the reduced the level of a point. So what is the reduced the level of a point? The reduced the level of a point, it is just the level of that point taken as its height above the datum. So it is the vertical difference between that point and the datum. That is a reduced the level of a point. It is the same as the elevation of a point. So if we say the reduced level of a point, it is the elevation of that point. What about the datum surface? The datum, it is the level of a point or the level surface to which other levels can be calculated. So it means that to calculate the level of other points or the level surface of other points, the reference is the datum. And generally, the datum which is commonly used all over the world, it is the mean sea level, the sea level. So the sea level or the mean sea level, it is the datum that is commonly used. Now, what about the benchmark? What about the benchmark? It is another term used in leveling. The benchmark, it is a fixed point of reference which has a known elevation. So, the point of reference with a known elevation, it is the benchmark, and it is used generally as a starting point to which other point can be referred. Now, what is the station point? Simply, the station point, it is the point where the staff is held. So, it is the point whose elevation is to be determined. Then, what is a change point, or CP? A change point, it is a point which indicates the shifting of the instrument. So, it is the point which shows that the instrument has been moved. On a change point, both backside and foresight are taken. That is all about some terms as they are used in leveling, including the reduced level of a point, 
the datum, the benchmark, the station point, and the change point. Now, it's time to start the leveling practice. We are going to perform the leveling work, the leveling operation. This is how we are going to proceed. We are going to perform the leveling within this small portion of the plot. So to level this plot, first of all, we are going to establish different points. Then after establishing, after selecting different points within this plot, next we will try to take the readings or the staff reading on each point. So after that, after taking the readings at each point, the issue is to calculate or to find out the reduced level of each point, the elevation of each point. Remember, the purpose of leveling, it is to find the elevation of given points with respect to the datum. So we are going to find the elevation of different points that we are going to select or that we are going to choose. This is how we are going to proceed. Let's consider this point as the point A. This is the first point that we have established. Let's call this point point A. This is point A. And it is the first point that we have established. So we will find out the elevation of this point later after taking the staff reading on this point. Now, this is point A. And let's consider this point as point B, the second point. Let us call this point a point B. This is the point B. Then, let's have another point. This is the third point, which is point C. Then, this is the point C. Remember, we are just establishing different points so that we can proceed with the calculation of elevations and reduce the level for each point. This is point C. And then, here we have the point D. It is the fourth point. Point D. So let's consider this point as point D. This is the point D. And let's select or choose the last point, which is this one. So, we are going to consider this as our last point, which is point E. Point E. Point E. Now, I think it is clear. We have established the different points within this small portion of our plot. Now, what we will do is to take the readings, to take the data or the staff reading at each point and this will help us to find out the reduced levels or the elevations for all points that we have selected. Now, before taking the readings, before taking the data from the staff, the first operation that we are going to do is to set up the instrument. We are going to set up the instrument so that we can proceed with the, taking the observations or taking the readings from the staff. Now let us proceed with the setup of the instrument. The setup of automatic level is done within two steps, the setting and the leveling. Now let us start with the setting. During the setup of instrument, the tripod is first set up in a position. So the tripod is set up in a position at a convenient height. Then the tripod legs are extended. Then the tripod legs are extended.
after extending the tripod legs, let us push the legs firmly into the ground, just like this. Let us push or plant the legs firmly into the ground so that the tripod is stable. Then, after this, you have to ensure that the top of the tripod or the tripod head is well on a level. And it is done by just eye estimation. So according to my judgment, according to my eye's estimation, the tripod or the top of the tripod is well on a level. Now, after setting the tripod, let us remove the instrument or the level from its box or from its carrying case. And what we are going to do is to fix the instrument on the tripod. Then, in order to do this in a right way, it is better, it is better, it is better to align the three leveling screw with these three corners of triangular tripod head, just like this. The three leveling screws are aligned with the three corners of this triangular tripod head. Then let us attach the instrument to the tripod. Now we are done with the setup of this tripod as the setting process. The second process of setting the instrument it is the leveling. So let us proceed quickly with the leveling process. The leveling of the instrument is done by means of these three leveling screw or foot screws. So to level the instrument, we use these three leveling screws. What we do is to bring the bubble, the water bubble here, into the center of its land. So we are going to make sure that the bubble is centralized. To do this, it's better to place the instrument telescope, to place the telescope of the level parallel to align between two leveling screws just to place this telescope parallel to these two leveling screws. And then by turning these leveling screws both in and out, we bring the bubble adjacent to the center of the circle. And after this, we turn the instrument at 90 degrees. After turning the instrument at 90 degrees, we use the third leveling screw to bring the bubble into the center of the circle or into the middle point of the circle, just like this. After the setup of this automatic level, what we are going to do is to take the data or to take the readings on the staff. So we are going to take the staff reading at each point that we have established. First of all, in order to take the observations or to take the data from the staff, we need to point this telescope toward the staff. So we need to face the staff. So after pointing our telescope, to the staff, then we are going to perform the focusing of this, this instrument in order to make the staff clear, so that the staff or the image is seen clear in our telescope. Now, to do the focusing, the focusing operation is done in two ways. We are going to focus the objective, the focusing of objective, and the focusing of the eyepiece. So, to focus the objective, it is done by using this focusing screw in order to bring 
the image of the staff clear and sharp. So we need to have a clear vision. We need to see our staff. Then, by adjusting this focusing screw, the staff is seen clear and sharp. So, the staff is now focused. After focusing the objective by using this focusing screw in order to bring the image of the staff into focus, let us proceed with the focusing of the eyepiece. So, the eyepiece is turned clockwise or anticlockwise until the close hairs and the study lines are seen clear and sharp. So we are turning this eyepiece in order to bring the close hairs into focus. Now the close hairs are clear and they are focused.